Welcome back everyone to Modded Minecraft 1.7. So, uh, yeah, I'm trapped in the ethanol tank. Yep, totally trapped, glitched in here, no way out, uh, gonna have to restart. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> With the staff of traveling, you can get inside of iron tanks for some odd reason, so, uh, I went ahead and I had a barrel full of saplings and yeah, we got seizure barrels back there. I got them covered up and uh, I thought, well, since they're just in there getting voided, might as well, you know, start turning them into ethanol again. So I've got these hooked up and got Ender IO conduits just for everything pretty much. They, they do everything I need them to. So today, I had some plans, and I was thinking, you know, it's always annoying when I look at my inventory and I'm like, oh, I've got no bucket, I need to get a water bucket, and I need to come all the way back over here to grab my bucket, or I, I don't have a grafter, I have to come all the way over here, type in grafter correctly, which is very difficult, and, and do this, and make the grafters. What if I had something to uh, keep all this stuff loaded in an ender chest for me at all times? Sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan to me. Uh, only problem though is I don't have enough blaze rods. No. So, uh, hmm. What can we do about that? Um... I could probably make a looting sword. See, looting tokens require two emeralds. How many emeralds do I have? 17. So we could make a looting three sword. No trouble. We could even put it on the wither bane if we wanted to. Which, uh, hmm. Not sure if I want to do that or not. Might want to have a separate sword for looting. Okay, well, I guess I will go do that and collect a bunch of blaze rods. Alright, and it is a day or two later for me, and um, I got some blaze rods. It's going to make a more sophisticated setup, but uh, this is what I've got right now. Nothing automated about it. Just flip the lever, kill the blazes. You, you'll take damage, but that's okay. I've got plenty of armor. And here I have added an Emmy interface and an ender chest. So, what are we going to do with this? Well, there's this cool little mod called Translocator. It's uh, made by Chicken Bones, the same guy who makes NEI and Ender Storage. So, it is a pretty cool mod. You could use it to move stuff between containers. Oh, and I got a new cobble gen set up over here, which generates something like 100 cobblestone per second. Which, uh means it would take about 120 hours to make enough for an octuple compressed cobblestone. <laughs> so I might need to do some AFK. Uh, anyway, these are pretty cool. You place them in the same block space. And for example, let's grab some cobblestone. So the ME interface, we can tell it what to export into these slots here. So for example, if I do that, it will always keep a stack of cobble in there. I could put it back. Now, if I were to push this middle part in the translocator on the ender chest, it starts moving the cobblestone over. So let's go ahead and turn that off for now. So that's useful, but not exactly what I want. So we can upgrade these translocators with a few things. One is a diamond nugget. We put that on. Now we can actually control what goes into this chest. So I could say, keep a stack of cobblestone in there at all times. And well, it's already got one in there, but if I take it out, it'll start to fill up again and stop once it has one stack. A, uh, another upgrade I could put on is glowstone dust, and if I do this, it will move entire stacks at a time. And finally, you can also put on redstone dust, and that allows you to control it with uh, redstone. <clears throat> okay, so now if I were to flip this lever, 
you could see something went through. It was actually what was not on this uh, translocator here. So, for example, if I were to put another stack of cobble in, it's gone. So, we can use this to have an ender chest that's always supplied with certain items. So I can be out in the field and I'm like, oh no, I forgot my cobblestone. Here we go, more cobblestone. Oh, and that lever is backwards. Now the problem is I want it to also extract the items automatically, not have to come down here and flip a lever. So we're going to need either a redstone clock to flip this every once in a while, or a computer would seem a bit excessive, honestly. Hmm. Okay, well I'm going to give this some thought and figure out what to do. Well, that was unbelievably easy. I just made a redstone clock from extra utilities, which are made like this. Super cheap. And it just kind of makes this thing jitter every once in a while, and that's more than enough to get rid of any junk that's in there that's not supposed to be in there. Or so I thought. Okay, that was just a, a little visual thing. Desync or something. And I did not mean to put my magnet in here. I don't think I've shown this off yet. And I don't know why I made two of these enter chests. Well, that's okay. I am not short on resources at this point. So, not an issue. So, this works pretty well. Only downside is you have to put the stuff you want to export in the interface. And in this uh, GUI over here. And we only have... One, two, three, four, five... Eight slots on the interface and nine on the translocator. But that's not too bad, so now it's just kind of a matter of deciding what I want in here. I know I want grafters, and I currently have two grafters in here. Let's actually take both of those out. Hmm. Okay, so as I was trying to say, I think not only do I want to export grafters, I want to craft them if necessary. So let's take a look at our interface terminal here. And this molecular assembler's interface is uh, all empty. So we're going to need another one. And I've learned that you don't have to have a cable connected directly to this uh, molecular assembler. If you have a full block inter interface, that will also work. So if we do that, that should now be receiving power. And we should be able to put more patterns. So what patterns do we need? Well, we need sticks, bronze, and the grafters themselves. So let's go ahead and put in grafter here. And we need sticks. Oh, and we're going to have just the right number of blank patterns. We should actually make more of those. Uh, we're going to need bronze, which I'll use the forestry bronze like I always do. And then we will need the grafters. And I'll just drop these right in here. Okay. And let's make some more of those blank patterns. Uh oh, what am I missing? Quartz glass? Okay. And there we go. So now, I want this to export grafters. But how do we make it so that it will also craft them if necessary? Ah, here we go. Crafting card. This must be what does it. And I apologize if my voice is a little yucky. It's uh, morning, of course. Okay, so let's put you in here, and what are you going to do? Are you going to make... Yes, it made a grafter. Nice. 
And we also need to tell it to export a grafter. And it made a new one to fill the interface. Nice. So now, whenever I'm walking around and I'm like, oh no, I need to harvest a sapling grafter. Just, just like that. Oh yes, uh, the the little electromagnet from Ender IO. It uh, doesn't have a, a super long range, but if you shift right click, it turns on and it will pull items towards you if you're close enough, like that. Where did it go? Where? What do you? What? Um. Well, well, that was strange. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is fun. I, I don't understand what's going on, but it's fun. We. <laughs> okay, that's that's kind of odd. And I also made this uh, flux capacitor to power the electromagnet and the staff of traveling. The electromagnet doesn't really use that much power though, so it's not that bad. So I guess technically I could also use this gray pouch to uh, put stuff I don't need anymore into the ME system, so there's not really any reason for me to carry the white one, I suppose. Hmm. Okay, and I would kind of like to have something that would allow me to store or access the stuff in this chest as well without having to export it through a translocator because that would just be messy. But I can't put it in this ender pouch because it will just extract it automatically. Alright, well I'm going to stop recording for a little bit and I'll get back to doing something later. Well, I think I'm going to have to give this quarry a speeding ticket. <laughs> yeah, I'm in the mining world right now. I just uh, set up a quarry earlier this afternoon and uh, left my game running while I was away. And uh, I've noticed it doesn't display these real-time updates whenever you're AFK. So, uh, hmm. You can see I did get a couple of warp effects here while I was gone, but I don't know how long I was gone exactly, but this quarry's down to level 28, which is just absolutely insane. I love it. So, I've got this thing powered with this dimensional transceiver, which is the Ender IO equivalent of a Tesseract. I think these things might have a little idle energy consumption. I'm not sure because my base's power usage f uh, fluctuates a lot. So it's kind of hard to say for sure. Uh, these can also accept items, but I went ahead and just hooked it up to the Ender Chest because that's a system I already have in place. So I've actually played this a lot today without recording. It's been a, a typical day. Had to make uh, four... Uh, four of my usual trips, a little over an hour of driving a piece, plus uh, other miscellaneous errands, so uh, pretty much I put in a full days of work for no pay, you know, the usual, and I've got some textures that are kind of messed up here. So, in order to keep up with the energy demands of that quarry, and I think there's like a thousand RF per tick cap on these uh, dimensional transceivers, I had to add another layer of turbines or turbines to this uh, generator. I think both turbine and turbine is correct, but I normally say turbine. I don't know why I'm saying turbine now. But uh, this allows it to basically keep a full charge, which is uh, what I want. And how are we doing on fuel here? Whoa! Got another full barrel right here. Oh wow, it's already drained this barrel up here. So this thing is really drained through the fuel running that quarry, but that's not a big deal really. Wow, a barrel and a half, or a drum and a half, I mean. That's a lot of fuel. 
of course, once the quarry stops running, that will uh, reduce the power usage quite a bit. And uh, of course, we're also processing ores with these upgraded machines, so we've got a lot of energy draw on the system right now. It's hard to say how much exactly, just because there's so much stuff all over the place here. Just got a little bit of everything. Okay, so right now it's dark and raining, so these solar panels are not producing any energy. But during the day, the solar panels uh, actually make it so that, according to this power monitor, we input more power than we output. But at night, we actually drain a little bit. So, not bad. Not bad. I can actually hear the pulverizer from the bed. That's kind of funny. And I don't know what my map is doing. It has suddenly decided that the grass is this kind of disgusting purple color or something. So I have no clue what that is about. I think I need to restart my client. And I'm definitely going to leave this uh, my game running overnight. I did add another ME drive. Got four 16K cells. Uh, the quarry has definitely filled up some cells here. So we'll have more space for stuff to flood in. wonder what exactly is filled it up. It's so hard to say. Lexica Batania. <laughs> hmm. Either way, we've got a lot of stuff. Three thousand iron. That's pretty good. I think I had fourteen hundred earlier. Down to fifty-three diamonds. Well, we're not at diamond level yet, so no diamonds coming in, obviously. And does anything else change? down here. Not really. How is our cobble? Nearly six million? Okay. That's not terrible. And these drums are empty, right? There's a lot of stuff right now that uh, has messed up renderers. I don't know what mod is causing it. Uh, it's been doing this ever since I updated stuff, so I don't know. Very hard to say. Okay, and we've actually got enough storage space here. Alright, looking good all around. Gonna have tons of resources. Uh, I kind of throttled back the machinery over here, and I'll try not to look at the bad barrels. <laughs> Look at the ethanol texture. What the heck is that? It kind of looks like it has an eye in it sometimes. That is kind of creepy. So, got 500 buckets. I think what I'm going to do is replace that MFR tree farm with either golems or maybe even a forestry tree farm. I don't know. Oh, and I've got the inscriber set up to do all the processors here. Uh, this has an... This is an import bus to pull out the product. Then there is an export bus on the side for redstone. And on the bottom for the printed silicon. Which, uh, there's also a crafting card in here, so it will craft the printed silicon if it needs to. And on the top is where it says the, uh printed circuits make the processors. Remember when you're making these patterns do not include the redstone or the silicon because that is separate. And I think that's all that's really changed. Kind of hard to say. I mean I've done a lot and it's been a very long day. I've just kind of hopped on here whenever I could and left the game idling. So this is probably a good place to 
end the episode so thank you for watching uh, i hit 200 subscribers recently thank you so much it means a lot to me and if you're not already subscribed don't forget to hit subscribe on your way out if you want to and i will see you next time